It is time to call the meeting to order. Sandy, would you call roll call, please? You bet. Council person ready. Green. Perry. Here. Hansen. Yes. McGinty. Here. All right. Thank you. Uh, welcome to everybody that's here this evening. Feel free to make comments on the items on the agenda tonight and also item number five, a citizen's opportunity to address items that are not on the agenda. We'll go on to item number two, conflict of interest. Do any of you council people have any conflicts of interest on anything on the agenda? No. no. Okay. Item number three, consent agenda A, approval of agenda. B, approval of the minutes of the May 12, 2015 council meeting. C, consideration of approving Sac City Arts Council's application for a noise pollution permit. D, consideration of approving Sac City Chamber Main Street Parade Permit for Sac City Chautauqua Days Committee on June, July 4th, 2015. E, consideration of appointing Norm Lumen to the Sac City Arts Council. F, receipts and disbursements. Curtis, would you stand, please? Place. Thank you. The, uh, I'm just curious what the noise permit is for. It's for the uh, Arts Council at the library. They're having an outdoor music, a guitar, and a storyteller. Is there a date on that? Um, okay. Is there a time? It's 4 o'clock. Thank you. His name is Jerry Barlow. Okay. Is there anything else? Any other questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? I would move passenger consent agenda. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to approve consent agenda. Are there any further questions or comments? If not, I call for a vote. Council Person Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Rennie? Yes. Rennie? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, item number four is being struck because they wanted to have s some additional contracts in place. So we are going to move on to item number five, which is citizens opportunity to address council on items not on the agenda. Is there a projected time when we will have the final agreement to act on? Yeah, actually, it's seven like the conversation I had this morning with Martin and uh, Pete. The desire was to have at least 12 of the contracts in hand. As of this morning, we have 11. So um, I indicated to him, as the council had indicated to me some months ago, that when we were ready to proceed, we wanted to have a special council meeting at that time to speed anything up that could potentially be sped up um, that I, I would indicate it at that time. Um, the, um, with the asbestos cleanup going on, in conjunction with construction beginning, I don't know that that's actually going to be necessary because uh, the asbestos needs to be taken care of first. But um, there'll be action on this relatively soon. How many properties have an asbestos issue that we know of? Uh, pretty much all of them have at least some form or fashion, whether they are just, um, you know, a, a non dangerous form or if they have uh, uh, additional work that needs to be done. The entire, they're talking about the entire cost for asbestos being less than seven to $8,000 for the whole project. Which to give you an idea, the asbestos cleanup uh, for the, um, the Winchell property alone was in that range of cost for one piece of property, if you give it kind of a comparison of cost. Thank you. Is, is the facade, uh, project moving along according to what the rate that the contractors would like it to be or, or well what, what they have the expected? experience of dealing with this with the storm lake project kind of at the same time as this so they've seen kind of the slowdown that goes on during the post bid process um, there have been a, a, a handful of projects that are requiring some alter some alteration to scope and um, as those are getting settled out um, that there'll be a formal stage when everything is complete. Right now, there's two particular projects that um, there's a significant scope change in the works. And um, the hope is, is that one of those will be completely settled this week. Um, the other one will... That's probably not a realistic expectation. To your knowledge, was 
Excuse me. Denise, Denise would, yeah, would you stand, please? Um, Thank to you. To your knowledge, were the owners of the buildings that had asbestos issues notified? I don't think the final report has been presented yet. Um, I'm just getting preliminary results coming from the people who were doing the testing. Once the report's available, I'm happy to share it with all the business owners. Do you have a, uh, an idea of when that will be available? I'm going to guess it'll be here in the next week. Um, I'm just waiting on an, a written copy from them. Right now, all I have is verbal communication from them. And I'm a little out of the loop. Has a contractor then been selected for this project? There is a contractor, a low bis contractor, that has been awarded. A final agreement has not been signed, and that is usually not done in these type of projects until the property owners, you have a significant number of the property owners that have committed to the project. As of right now, 11 of the potential 17 property owners have signed off on the agreements. Um, there's about five of them that are working through varying levels of issues. I suspect three to four of them will actually be done this week. So. And um, just one more clarification, who's following up on those five or six? Uh, depending on the issue, there's a couple of us dealing with the issues. We, um, the responsibility for dealing with the property owners directly is split between three different individuals. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And uh, so that communication is being handled by one of those three channels. As far as the specific details dealing with many of these issues outstanding, these are being dealt with um, directly between the architect and the property owner. Okay, thank you very much. Oh. But may I add, may I address the council on number five? Yes. Is there anything else about uh, any other questions regarding that? If not, we will go to five. Okay. Um, this is actually sort of a segue from the facade grant. Um, we were down in the Des Moines area and went through Jefferson, Adel, and Valley Junction. And I know Adel is using Pete um, Franks, mm -hmm. architect. And I can tell you their project, maybe it's awesome. So if it's an indication of what we can anticipate in Sac City, I'm very encouraged, even if it's been slow and delayed. I think what I have seen down in Adela, and I happen to just video it with my camera, so if anybody is interested in seeing that, I'd be happy to share with it. But <coughs> truly, I, I think we've picked a good architect, and it appears that their project's going to be pretty amazing in Adel. What, 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 Adel, was it just Adel that you saw, or was it? No, I saw three, but I'm not sure. I, the only one that I know for specific that Pete Frank's agent, associates are doing is Adel. I don't know if they did Valley Junction or <coughs> Jefferson. What kind of projects are they doing? In Adel. Adel, yes. They're doing, you know, um, some upper story, a lot of it's paint, but the painting is multicolored and architecturally correct for the building. I mean, it's not like pink and purple, it's the wonderful rusts and greens and stuff like that. Others is windows improvements, um, <coughs> some signage. Um, I'm, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say it's very similar to what I think Sac City is going to be doing. Um, theirs is all around the courthouse, which I don't know if you're aware I know that where they, that's at, yes. Okay, so that they did a uh, renovation on that of multiple million dollars several years ago, mm -hmm. so I think this is a complement to their project on the courthouse. But if it's in, I'm just trying to share that if sure. it's any indication of what we might be expecting, I think we should be very pleased. Thank you. That's good. Well, go ahead. You had a question. Oh, uh, <clears throat> you were at the Chamber Coffee uh, about this past Thursday at the uh, museum. museum, and you'd gone over some, you know, things that you'd worked with on the website uh, mm -hmm. that sounded really, you know, quite good. Could you share a little bit of that with us as well? Oh. In fact, I am going to go down to um, Bon Durant and work with the gal that is coordinating all of theirs as far as their website. And um, so I'm going to be learning how to take um, little mini uh, advertisements for each community business that is a chamber member. For instance, let's say they came to us and said, I might say, oh, we have two 
two unique little restaurants in, in an 1895 building that have this and this and this, and I would love for you to come to Sac City, and it might be that long. But it would link to then to my web, our website for the, so they could go to the header of any um, uh, uh, of the alphabet, and like for us, they would go to a C, and it, and my little two-minute advertisement might come up, or it might go to Barb's for the insurance, or, but it, not just it isn't just a picture of it's a, and they're encouraging verbalizing it on your web page so that you're communicating a feeling I think as well so I'm going to take some time and go down and learn from her but additionally I've been um, able to link the chamber to the all school reunion um, several other little things that mm -hmm. that um, it's expanding and um, I've tried to put together a commerce page section, and they're all pulled down. So commerce, and then list all of our businesses. And then I have um, like activities, um, community activities, and it would be, I have the rec center, the aquatic center, library, all of them listed. And then I am trying to get, obviously, their personnel to say a little bit about like our aquatic center, what makes it unique, the pool, whatever. So, um, sort of a selling tool for Sac City to show that, you know, when really when you when you get into it, we have a lot. Mm -hmm. We do have we a do. lot. And um, what I would like to have is our new logo. Mm -hmm. Right. I have no, I do not have access to that, and I think we should very much have that. In fact, um, I would think that chamber people would want that on their web page. You know, anybody that's a chamber member should have mm -hmm. the logo. And the new saying that we have, not just the, but there's a... Well, if anybody could share picked. that to me. Well, I've got the logo, I can email you. Okay, and whatever and the slogan is. Yeah, be. whatever our slogan is. I'm sorry. I've got the, I've got the packet as a PDF. Remember. I don't have the... We haven't gotten everything back from Blue Space yet. Hopefully... Soon. That's why I had it on as an update tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I don't. But um, I've got the logo that, we, that you can insert. I don't. All we have is a PDF of their packet. It would be harder to insert the saying and font and stuff from a PDF. I, I have uh, done that to make your new garbage tags and stuff like that. I, it's not hard with the no. PDF. I don't think. No, you just gotta okay. have the right program to. Prop out all the crap you don't need. And you can cut it. You can cut it. Crap can be edited. That's what I did. Yeah, it's hard to edit it into the shape, but yeah, I can send you the package. You should have put that in the notes. I will try to eliminate all crap. But if if that is possible, that would be a great addition to have that. And I don't know, does does the City have its own personal web page too. Mm -hmm. okay. City of Sac City. Dot, dot org. org. Okay. Well, Sac City is this, the chambers of Sac City dot org, and yours is the city, city of, of Sac, Sac City. city. Okay. If you could just sort of help me with that, and I can link those two together if you want, and if you don't want, I will not. I think everything well, I think should be link. Good to be I think we absolutely. should all be linked. And I, I'm putting all kinds of, I mean, pictures, pictures up in taking pictures of just. Like the new sign for the for the depot, and I think they're one that I would like to get a little advertisement quickly because they're mm -hmm. a new company and local, and what their vision is and whatever. That wasn't on my agenda, but <laughs> I hope I've shared information that is of interest to you. Okay. Okay. I thought we would be on the agenda for accepting our uh, license, our liquor license. Oh, done. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. It's coming. It is? It's yeah. on here? No, it was done last time. Oh, that's why I haven't heard it. Oh. I'm sure it was on there. Nope. Done. Oh, thank you so very much. I was oh. a little concerned, you know. Oh. You're sort of going, no, no, we don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm sort of really, I, you're going to have to excuse me because I'm sort of pumped about a couple things. Um, Two ladies were in early morning. We now are open at 5.30, so they were in on their way from Yankton to meeting on the east side of uh, 
Iowa, and they were meeting with 45 other bank banking individuals that put bank tours together. And they were going to share. They said, "Oh, what's you know what's in Tax City that we might be interested? You're on Highway 20 now. You're easy to get to." Da 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 da. So I shared everything from the museum, um, the conservation center, uh, Chautauqua Park, anything that I could think of. I shared with them and gave them. You know, Ross. He was giving them all the history and. And so after about 45 minutes, um, they asked for 50 um, business cards, which I gave them, to encourage the bank banking people that they were meeting with that day to bring bus tours to Sac City to see the wonderful things that we really do have. Mm -hmm. And we need to, I feel, we need to blow our own horn mm -hmm. and, and tell people about it. So. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, she's she was just like, oh my gosh, you know, the city has to be really supportive about these things, and so I'm hoping we can be awesome. You know, and we were recently on a trip, and, and it involved tours of, of you know castles and so on, and, and there were always tour guides that would explain things what were going on. So, you know, one of the things we might look at as a city or, or a, as a chamber. Perhaps a tour guide if these people do well, arrive. Ironically, she asked if I, either Ross or I would step, be stepped on step on guides to do the song and dance part of it with the people as they go around the community, mm -hmm. which we would be happy to do it. But if you feel there's someone that would be better qualified to do it, you could certainly ask them too. Right. But right. they yeah, they I very can... much want someone on the community from the community to step on board and as I've done you know, when I was in Europe and stuff they do that within the community so I think we might have I'm not saying all 45 of them please don't misunderstand me but if we got three or four of them yeah. coming through Sac City at 45 people in a bus that ain't all bad no mm -hmm. it's not I've had bad. some some bus tours down at Chautauqua Park I've got a PowerPoint that I've done of the history and you know, Throw it on the wall and yeah. And I know when I first arrived, uh, Laura did quite a few of them at that time, which through chamber. But. So anyway, I was I just want to show you where that's Sac City being not directly in Highway 20 has still been very beneficial because they were coming down, came over. They feel our access is very easy because of the four lane. And not two lanes, so I I think Highway 20 is something we should really embrace and say yep. thank you for having it there. Okay. Um, also spoke briefly when um, I was with Bruce down in uh, Des Moines with Tom uh, Rydell and Mike Wag Wagler with Main Street, and I, this is just a comment to the chamber or to the council. Excuse me. They do not feel that. Sac City will maintain the level of commitment on Chamber Main Street without a director. We and, don't think so either. And they were very honestly quite concerned that we have been um, moving forward, uh, sort of skipping from one thing to the next without a, a director. And um, and I think Bruce will back me up on this. Is if you listen to the awards that came to the communities, they were very much coordinated by chamber and city, and it, they weren't necessarily big projects, but they worked together in it. So that's just my little spiel too. We need a director, and we need somebody who wants to sing the praises of Sac City and because we have a lot to offer, and I don't want this opportunity um, that we had with Main Street to get lost in the fray of not having a director. So it's just sort of a plea to, if we can think of a way to do something, I think this city is remiss in not having someone available. Anyway, then yesterday, I was, Monday, we were down at the Freedom Rock, maybe 45 minutes. And we were there in the Des Moines Harley Freedom Rock tour 
group, which was about 11 bikes, Harleys with double occupancy, were at the, of the rock. And because Ross and I were there, we told him the stories. And there was an individual in the group that had been a tunnel rat. And as we're talking, he is standing in front of our rock crying. And if I get emotional, please just ignore me. Because his heart was just grabbed by our rock. And there was another individual that he had been a medic. And although they were both on both side, the same side of it, their emotion that was captured when they looked at that rock was really gripping and they were on their way to hit four rocks they were hoping of, uh, with the final one being the one in Greenfield um, but I have to tell you as a council they went and they bought gas and they bought things at Senex and they did bring that rock does bring new people and new out-of-town out of um, dollars into our community. And we were trying to get out of there. We weren't planning on staying there. And individual, two more individuals came in a car, and then another individual came in a car, and we were like, okay, how long are we going to do this? We've got to escape. But uh, um, the funny thing was one of the couples were from Ross's hometown. And they're all excited because they are getting the rock and Esterville isn't, or Emmitsburg, whichever the two of it is, because they're, they're not even like 500 people in that community, but can hardly wait to get the rock. So I guess what I'm just trying to um, internalize with all of us is that it's more than just a rock to the people that see it. And uh, we have yet to put in the ceiling, which is being donated, is going to be corrugated metal. I don't know if anybody stopped in, but we have reused, repurposed, and we have used barn. Uh, we've been donated uh, barn siding, so the inside has barn siding and repurposed uh, pallets. And um, the sink was at Habitat for Humanity, so we have really done this on the um, respecting the, the, the economy and um, reusing it, and with that said, we are going to put it on the market for sale. We will love to be the custodians of it, but was never, ever, ever our intent to own that property and um, have the financial responsibility that we have undertaken for the last two years to get it to the position that it is. There are 400 and some Gallardia seeds in that front yard that will come up in a blaze of glory. Um, gold and bright reds and it will not have to be mowed. It's, we've got it so low maintenance and if you've seen the flags that we put on the windows, um, those individuals that were there think our that location is, well, the, the Lake Park one is much more beautiful, but they think ours is a huge testament to the commitment from the city. And that is wonderful to listen to, but it's hurtful. So I'm just letting you know, as of June 1st, there will be a for sale sign in that uh, property. And that is um, all. And I think Set City has so much going for it. And you as a council should be looking for some. Oh, I also talked to an individual, excuse me, in Des Moines that is looking for an industrial site to relocate his, not really, expand his business. And um, the fact that we were only two miles from Highway 20 was hugely, I can't even begin to express how interested he was, except that, that we don't have access directly from Highway 20 to the, the north side of town. So, hmm. sorry. No, well, we've tried. I know you have. I'm just, I, I know you have, but I'm, I'm just telling you, I, I mean, I talked to people that 
know, I, I, we have an industrial park. I know the city will work with you. Okay, what do you have? Can I, how quickly can my semis, because they don't want to be doing the through the town type of thing. Yeah. Maybe um, it would be good to go to another meeting and visit about that information that happens on Tuesday mornings. We've been, we have been working with the supervisors trying to get some I, I, I know, so, but it's hard for me to, to um, put myself out there too much anymore. Well, I just mean to share that information about that, the, that somebody was interested, but a drawback is the fact that there isn't it a road. It is huge for and, him, for them. And right. I'm not saying that every manufacturing um, operation would be that, but they would. But they have, uh, they just had to turn down a major um, invoice from Mercedes because they don't have the capacity to continue manufacturing. And, uh, would it be some, would that be something that somebody from our town should contact them? How about if I have him do that? How about if it goes the other way? Yeah. That would be. I don't know that I am at liberty to tell. Right. What That's, his That's okay. Plans but are. I think if you would, it may, maybe there would be something that we could work with there to entice them to maybe think about it okay. a little bit more. Okay. Thank you for all of your work for Sun City. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And thank you for thank you. having that done for oh, me. I was yeah. a little bit concerned. <laughs> no, it was done for your date, so well, I, I thought it had come through. So, yeah. Well, I don't know if you Tansy so, was just trying to get it done for us. And no, no. We, we really much, very no. much appreciate it. That you okay. Have told them. Thank you, and thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, we go to um, item number five, six, which is continuing business, A Blue Space. I did uh, call Nick this morning at Blue Space, and he indicated to me that a rough draft should be in my hands either tomorrow or Thursday. Once I receive a rough draft, I'll make copies and have copies available, notify the council that there are draft copies available to review so that uh, at the following next council meeting, you guys can provide me feedback for any communication we want to provide back to Blue Space on them. Very good. Okay. Could you remind us what it's a rough draft copy of? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my understanding is, is it is a full branding manual. It will include recommendations, um, both positive and negative, towards fonts to use, um, on uh, language terminologies to use, types of pictures to use, color schemes to use, um, the logos themselves, and, and certain alterations of the logo that could, they recommend we use. Um, there will be other elements to it as well, but primarily that's the type of information that will be in there. It's kind of a, it not only tells you what they recommend you do use, but they kind of also, well, they don't kind of, they also recommend to you what to stay away from. And also, it's how to get your community to work together that all the business people can use this branding in their businesses. Anybody that has any effect on Sac City would try to use this so we have a unified front. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we're going on to seven miscellaneous, and A is consideration of approving planning and zoning commission's request for allocation of ten thousand dollars to abate asbestos at 500 and 502 William Street in FY 2015 financial year 2015-16 that would be me okay. we are um, just a reminder we we did get a grant from the DR for eleven thousand dollars to abate the asbestos at that address, otherwise known as Sunwise, which leaves us $10,000 short in order to finish asbestos uh, inspection and abatement. And I was directed to come before the board today and see if you guys can make up the $10,000 difference. And actually, I'm going to do the math a little bit on that. Fifty. 
Okay, yeah, it's ten bucks. Yeah, so, do you have bids for the abatement yet? We do not. We have an estimate. We have an estimate in the note of. I'm just going to say twenty one five. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Got eleven and ten. That doesn't go to twenty one five. Ten and eleven goes to twenty one. I think. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Eleven five and ten. Eleven five was a grant. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. Did I? Did I just you said say eleven? I was thinking it was eleven five. I apologize. <coughs> uh, yes. Twenty thousand four. Okay. This is how it breaks down. It's twenty thousand for the removal. It's fifteen hundred for the inspection. The planning and zoning is already committed to the fifteen hundred for the inspection. So we're going to have eleven thousand five hundred for the removal and to reimburse the inspection. However, however we want to do it because it all ends up being city money. And then um, what would that be? Eight five? Am I doing that math right? Out of the twenty thousand? Ten. Nine. Yeah, eight five. So. So it might actually, if we, if we use the 1500 that we've already agreed to do from the planning and zoning, and, and we don't get reimbursed for that, then we'd only be asking you for, for 8-5 tonight, in fact, or whenever the conversation ends. Yeah, quick question. Yes. Are you aware of any other abatement that has to be done on that property as far as possible uh, the water problems around with the... Chemicals and so forth that we're putting in there. My understanding is that there could be a groundwater hazard there, and that's one of the reasons that the property hasn't been put up for tax sale. There isn't a problem. The EPA came in and inspected it, and they found a little spoonful of um, something on the back dock, and that's all they found. Okay. It wasn't able to qualify to be a brownfield property because of that, because it's not. There is a problem, but not to that level. Right. And the DNR isn't going to have a, it doesn't have a problem with it. There's there, there's no problems. That's okay. the that's the answer. We abate the asbestos and we can knock that sucker down. But who originally? Owns go on. Who owns it? That's still Sunwise. right now. Ken Papp owns it. Yeah, Sunwise property, right? Right. Is there? Uh, it's going to be Ken Papp. Yeah. It's going to be him alone that we have to get signed off. Of. Well, actually, it's the deed is in Sunwise Corporation. Sure. And. Sunwise Corporation obviously doesn't exist anymore right. because it was terminated by the state for failure to file the forms mm -hmm. that was required. Am I correct so far? That's correct. Um, Ken, Ken ended up, the, the courts ended up making Ken responsible for that property. And then, um, and then he, I'm not, I'm not going to get the correct terminology. But they forgave him because they he had no money. Him, right. right. So now it's just, it's just his to sign off on it. Right. I have a problem, <clears throat> excuse me, with investing that much money into a piece of property that we don't own. We would own it at the time. But we don't want it. <laughs> it's too many problems because, number one, you have to base the asbestos. We have to take care of that problem. Then you have to demolish the building, bring up the property. And I guess I personally feel using the taxpayer's money to actually do something to a building that we don't own currently and really, in my opinion, don't want to own, I find it very difficult to comprehend it for us to do. So that's just my personal opinion. Can you share with me why you don't want to own that? Why would we want to know the piece of property that we have to sink that much money into to clean it up? And then what would be the purpose of the property after it was cleaned up? It's a small enough piece of property. I'm not sure what the actual uses could be for it. Personal opinion. It is, is Ken <coughs> Pat willing to sign off on it and, you know, relieve himself of ownership? I think it's going to be achievable. There may be some health issues standing in the immediate way of him being able to sign off on it, but there would be an estate or somebody in charge that, that we would be dealing with. And According to the latest information I got, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Adam, there was a conversation at some point. 2008. 2008, in which he did indicate willingness to part with the property. 
to deed it over. If I remember right from what I heard, uh, it was, uh, and of course we're talking seven years ago now, uh, the comment that was made at the time was, um, I happily sign it over to someone. So, uh, as recently as 2008, he's willing to sign it over to someone, and I can't imagine him not wanting to sign it over. That's speculation on my part, but, you know, once he's, once he's already said he would, I would think it'd just be a matter of going through his lawyer and, and formalizing that. I guess, I think, first of all, thank you for work on trying to get a grant and trying to do some things, you know. To me, you know, there are a couple issues. Oh, there are a multitude of issues. You yes. Know. You know, um, first of all, I'm thrilled to see planning and zoning actually taking some action on something. You know, we did, uh, having been on planning and zoning, it seemed like it's easy to sit and spin your wheels on those things. Well, we have nine properties total right now that we're taking action on. <coughs> and, you know, and with that in mind, I know that a, a month ago at our meeting, the last meeting of April, is that right? April 28th. I think, when, it, when we had the goal setting set. Yep, that night. Um, we talked among ourselves that we really feel that uh, abating, improving, encouraging, cajoling, whatever we can to get properties in the city looking better. And, you know, the question begins, where do you start? I mean, I know it's, you know, it's a triage system. You know, what is the most important? And, you know, one question I know that I often hear Adam ask is, you know, what's your goal in this? Well, we have many goals in this. One, I think, is probably to improve the tax base of the city, to improve the appearance of the city, to improve, improve just the quality of life, to make it more attractive to other things. I mean, and each of us sitting here probably has a different goal. With that being said, with the uncertainty of the ownership at this point, and with reflecting on the conversation that we had a month ago, I guess I would like to propose that maybe um, we have a joint meeting of the council and the planning and planning. And I, I personally would have no problem giving eight thousand five hundred. Well, I mean, let's back up. I personally would have no problem. I mean, you have a fifteen thousand dollar allotment for 2015-16. I personally would have no problem increasing that somewhat if we could find a way to do this, and also work on some of the derelict properties that are in town. But I, I guess I would like, I know that there was, I think, an expression from most of the council a month ago that we kind of thought would be good to sit down with planning and zoning, because we don't want to micromanage what you're doing with your money. I mean, it's our money, but it, I mean, it, we don't want to say, to say your decisions are wrong, but I, I think we need a little more information also to be able to articulate a decision tonight. Um, I guess my proposal will be maybe your the third Tuesday at 6.30, is that your regular meeting? Which would be June 8th? June 16th. 16th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys want to plan on putting out an agenda and showing up in a, as a city council on June 16th at our meeting? So I know I'd have no problem, but... I mean, I think if we could do a council, we could actually take some action. If we actually had a special meeting, we could take some action on it that night. We could interact with the planning and zoning. And so, I mean, if we say yes, we're going to be irritating some people. If we say no, we're going to be irritating some people. But I kind of would like that face-to-face -face opportunity to interact with the planning and zoning board. Not that you're not speaking for them, but I mean, I think it would, I, I know that in, past history we've gotten in trouble with trying to override boards. I don't want to do that. I've sat on boards where other people override it. It doesn't I feel am, good. I, just to be clear, I'm completely open to this. Yes, I, I think we should get together. It should absolutely be uh, five, ten people sitting in a room, fifteen people sitting in a room talking about it because Sunrise is, is, is important. Tom, it's always as important. There have been two failures so far 
to get this building knocked down in the past. And we finally now have we finally now have some grant money. We're, we're getting our foot in the door with this thing. Oh, I understand that. And asbestos, <coughs> the asbestos abatement is going to be the biggest deal because once we get that abated, someone like a Orchis could come in and knock it down and bury it for less than you know the, the tearing it apart cost. Yeah. And if it was if it was nothing more than a parking lot in the future, it would be more parking for downtown Sac City. If it was nothing more than that, just something cheap to uphold that you guys could then sell in the future for a commercial lot, if 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 there were an opportunity of someone who wanted to expand their business from Des Moines and have easy access to Highway 20. Well, my I guess my main main concern that bothers me is spending all the money on one project and then. In the next few years, we're not going to have the money to continue doing some of the other things because of the budgetary budgetary uh, constraints that we have right now. I'm not sure that any more money can be allowed. That's what concerns me, I guess, more than anything, Curtis. And that concerns me too. Okay, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't take this request. I'm not. I'm not making this request lightly. Oh, I know. I understand that, and I appreciate what you've done. But if there were resources to, if, if there were resources economics, to do this, I'm sorry, go on. It boils down to economics when we're done. What it boils down to. Right. So would it be possible to have made a contact with Mr. Path to see if he is willing to relinquish ownership of the... Oh, I'm in the process of contacting. Okay. So if, so if by the 16th of June, if we were to have a joint meeting with the two boards, could we have maybe... No, I'm, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to promise at least, at least that he'll, that his lawyer will even get back to me before then. Well, how I mean, about we say that once you've determined can that you can get the information, then we'll set up a meeting. That would instead of you know putting the cart before the horse. Well, is, is that the only thing standing in the way of this? You want you want uh, something from Mr. Papp's lawyer saying, "Yeah, we're on board." That's what Ruth wants. I mean, I mean, I that, that, <coughs> without being able to get ownership of the building, there's no way that we can do anything anyway. Isn't that a brick building? Well, it's totally brick, isn't it? Um, some of the concrete inside block. walls. No, um, concrete block on one and, and, and brick on the other. I'd still like to get a hold of somebody at the Iowa League of Cities and find out how these these towns have gotten people in to take it down and buy the brick. And they've reused that brick. They had a meeting and a school building was completely taken down. Somebody purchased it and, and bought that brick and reused it. I, I know that program. I know that program. I know the one you're talking about, and we're actually we're looking into that. Uh, we were given that um, information by Mr. Flag, I think, or while I was during a during a meeting that I had with him. Mm -hmm. I think I that would be something that we would really want to know about because that certainly would help this whole. Yeah. I guess that's I guess, already underway. I guess if we could have kind of an exit strategy for the building. I mean, this is phase one of. Okay, we're, we're looking at asbestos. How do, how do we deal with the rest of the building? You know, make kind of a plan in in hand, and up and in the, some kind of assurance that yes, we could possibly get ownership of the you know that we can get ownership of the building. You know, and that you know, lots of things change. I know I feel differently about things now than I did in two thousand eight. Well, we can and, um, we can you know there are several different ways rather than just him giving it to us that we can get a hold of the building. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know we could go I mean, and just go through dangerous <laughs> buildings alone. I think we could, we could do that. I mean, I know, but I know what there are legal ways to do that too. I mean, that that would add to cost to do that. What is the what is the what is the parameter the time parameter on the grant? They're usually twelve months, aren't they? Right. Yeah. So can we gather all this information for this June sixteenth meeting and and discuss it at that time and kind of have everything want. together, please? Can you give me a capsule of the information you want me to bring to the June 16 meeting? Can you have the information about if the if the bricks would be recyclable? Would that be a possibility to have? Because if there if there was some revenue coming from somewhere, or at least someone that would take it down without a charge because they got to keep the material yeah. bricks, that would I would think that would make a huge difference. Okay. Ownership question. Ownership. Um, timeline plan kind of for what asbestos abatement and then and it might be something we can discuss together but I mean at least coming in with some ideas 
And if none of this is possible, then what, what are we looking at as a total cost to take this down? Because we're just guessing at it yes. at, the po at this point in time. And, and if we could perhaps have Adam and you, Curtis, get together and come up with a specific agenda so we know what the things we're covering uh, and to move the meeting along. Mm -hmm. And this might be pie in the sky. <clears throat> I know on the crab building we went down to Carroll and, and asked them you know, for money to help take it down. Is it pie in the sky to be believing that they might even be interested in putting some money towards the demolition of it? I can well, always ask. Or is it even a... What I think you said is you went down to the crab mm -hmm. No, no, no. The, no. the uh, Winchell building. Winchell building. Winchell's uh, and ask for money. D. Uh, Winchell and her dad. Ken Pap not. I'm not going to I'm not be able to speak specifically, but... I don't believe he has any money. Okay. All right. And I don't think his wife is going to just suddenly say, oh, well, here you go. Okay. All right. I, I, I knew it was probably a pie in the sky question. I don't think they're married. But, mm. I mean, we can certainly should, ask, but... Yeah. 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 If it's just, the if, if it's gonna, reports have tried to get money. Sure. There, if right? it's going to muddy the waters, I'd perhaps it's even best not to even ask the question. Do you okay. understand what we're asking for, and is it, are we good to go? Yeah, I just wanted to answer a quick question. Right now, we've got an activity start date of 6-1 for asbestos inspection and removal with an end date of 7-31-15. Uh, that's assuming we have the money tonight, and the, uh, and the agreement comes in in the next couple of days. And like that. Well, 6-1 is before we even have this meeting. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this, and then I'm saying that um, it's about a two-month process from when we say yes. And saying yes means okaying the money, uh, putting out the going out for bids, doing the 20-day notice, and uh, then hiring, having a having a letting or whatever. And, and at that point, then it'll be two months from when he starts. No. That's two months, including the including the notice there. And you can, in the bid process, require that they complete the project by X date. Yes. So I mean, y you can deal with any concerns about mm -hmm. drag in that manner. Usually, what we do when our bid pro packets is is we'll end a close date. Say we'll say September thirtieth. Every day past September thirtieth that the project is not complete, there's a X dollar penalty. Um, to the contractor for not being complete, and it's one way you kind of put some teeth into that type of process. So make sure they don't drag you off until they want to do it. Well, I wouldn't think that a decision would be totally made until after this meeting. Am I no. misunderstanding right. something? No. The, re his, his, when he set the time frame they were proposing was starting June 1st, but that's obviously going to be all right. That's that's, gonna it's it's, 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 it's going to be offset. The point I was telling you that is was how much time it would take. Yeah. How much time it would take, yeah. and so. know that that can be slid around. We've got a year from when the money is allocated. Okay, I get it. Okay. So, so basically, so we haven't started our year yet. Okay. So basically, two months would be happening from the time that we opt to go out right. for us. If we were to opt to go out for asbestos removal, it would be two months. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to put you <coughs> off, but I, I think it would be. Just feel put up, Bruce. I think it would be much better if we could sit 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 in one room and discuss it. Because I think that you guys obviously have some things in mind and just and I know that we would like to see some things in addition to Sunwise done. And if we could maybe Well, we've got eight other we've got eight other right garbage properties that we're working on right now. And that's great. You know. And just kind of look at look at what's happening. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. We don't need a motion to defer anything. I don't believe so. I think it's just not necessary. Six thirty okay with or six o'clock okay with everybody? That's a good time. Okay. That's a sixteen. Good. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Sixteenth at six. Okay, we're going on. Miscellaneous seven B consideration of approving planning and zoning commissions paint Iowa beautiful grant agreement. Administrative Rules and Program app Application for 2015 Paint Project. In your packets, or 
things and applications, which I want to talk about first. So the application at the top. There's a piece in red, I believe, on yours that says uh, at the bottom. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's page three. Run up. Oh, yeah. I wasn't nice enough to get red. Oh, okay. the, the one in our packet doesn't have red, but that the one, one is on the Yeah, this yeah, has got red right. on the bottom. The one that was in the packet first, I think, was okay. red. Okay. There are two versions of it. There was a proposal that we, do, that we make um, applicants aware of volunteer help through a local church youth group. I was informed as the meeting was coming to order tonight that that wasn't even possible because the youth group wasn't going to meet, meet until September, which is going to be well after the, uh, well after the time frame of of when this, uh, when the applications are due and, and all of that. So, so that's not going to be a thing. Could it be reworded to say if volunteer if volunteer help is desired, please let someone at the city know because I think we could come up with some volunteers and I think we need to put that on here. Yeah, it absolutely could. Because I've, I've heard people have said to me, well, you know, if I knew when and I knew what, and I would definitely volunteer. So if they, if, they would, if they would be willing to work with us, most of the time when we volunteer, the volunteers do it, and um, the people are nowhere around. So there's got to be a cooperative effort here. Well, um, we'll see what this volunteer help may be available for those who... Please contact the city office. Volunteer. <coughs> available. If desired, please contact the city office. If desired, please contact the city office. For details. For more details. Does everybody like that wording? Sure. Ask for Adam. Because we're trying to get this started tomorrow. Yeah. Fine with good. me. Yep. Great. Well, thank you for the motion to approve. Oh yeah. Okay. Is there any other discussion on it? No. There. There's plenty of discussion on it. Not on that wording. Okay. I don't have anything to add to that unless somebody else does. Do you need to have a? a you need to. You don't have we, to have a motion we, to we can approve all three pieces change at once. that. Yeah. Yep. Right. All three pieces. Okay. At once. So then no, let's go on. Uh, the next piece is let's see, what we got? The, uh, the grant agreement. The grant agreement. Has anybody had a chance to read the grant yep. agreement? Mm -hmm. Are there any changes that you guys would like to see made to the wording of the grant agreement? You're missing uh, uh, the city of Saxony will provide our purchase order probably. Um, the other thing, having worked with this a little bit, mm -hmm. I don't know whether these people can or can't, but if they have a little skin in the game, it makes things a little more important and it takes a lot of paint these days to paint a house, especially some of these that are in pretty bad disrepair so you've got the cost of the primer and you've got the cost of the paint would it be possible for them to match some paint or in somehow have a little bit of little part in it do you think that makes any sense at all they have a giant part that's why i brought it to you guys because i'm going to be uh, asking you to use your taxing authority should they not apply the paint to their house that's in the um <clears throat> That's in the administrative rules. To answer your question, Barb, I think there's only like 10 gallon of paint that they're dealing with anyway, and it's going to be a pretty darn small house. That's what I'm meaning. Maybe you could help more people if they got five gallons of paint they could match with so many gallons of paint. Or maybe there could be outside contributors that help match that paint. I'm just thinking how we could use it, spread it over more. More with right, and and it's just a suggestion. I don't care if you don't like it, then vote on it and be done with it. But well, it's I, just a discussion point. I think that I guess I don't think there's probably enough paint to really paint most people's houses 
anyway, they're going to have some skin in the game. Okay. And I think, and if you get good applicants, I guess I would encourage you to say, if you can award it to two and split it, that would be great. If you only have one worthy applicant, I mean, I hate to tie your hands. Well, and the thought is that if there are more applicants than we have paid for, we would solicit for more donations. Okay. Uh, that's my point, because I, I, I would think it would be nice to be able to encourage more than one person. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm not going to be able to say, I've only heard of one one person interested in me, but we have to, you know, okay. let the town know. I, I'm not going to throw a wrench in it. You do what you got to do. One is better than nothing. So is, is the grant for just a one-time only for 10 gallons or can yes. it be? Okay. It's, a, it's a yearly application. Okay. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions about the... Um, the rules, or not the rules, but the um, the agreement. If the agreement looks good to everybody, I'd like to move on to the administrative rules. And um, the big thing in this is the division of duties. Particularly, uh, I'd like you to focus on the fact that you'd be agreeing to assess uh, any applicant who doesn't apply in time in order to recover the cost of the, of the paint. We'd ask the court to put a lien against their property for the for the cost. Okay. That's how that would work. Okay. Um, do you want Do you want to change the wording on that to reflect accurately what you would do? At, at that would be much more accurate than yeah. And, and what I'm asking is, do you want to yourself put that wording in so that it reflects exactly what you wanted to say, or do you want to just dictate it to me now and I'll type it in later? City of Sackley shall be claimed via a lien on the property. A tax lien? I just say a lien because there is a difference. Okay. Via a lien on the property. The cost of the paint. Does that work for everybody? At any associated court cost. Because that can run you, that can run you more than the cost of the paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say, that does that automatically imply uh, that's uh, automatic. interest? Interest as well. He <laughs> tries putting cost and administrative cost and take it, take Adam's salary, however many hours it takes to add to it. Too. You might as well get more money in the general fund if you can. Okay, I would go with that. <coughs> Is there so anything that, else, Curtis? That's uh, that's all I got for planning the zone. I would move to accept the grant agreement, administrative rules, and program application for the 2015 Paint Iowa Beautiful Grant Project. With the with the changes as we indicated. I'll I'll second it. A motion has been made and seconded to adopt the Sac City Planning and Zoning Paint Iowa Beautiful application and administrative rules. And agreement. And Form agreement. agreement. Um, is there any additional questions or comments? If not, I call for a vote. Dr. Kristen Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Perry? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Curtis. Thank you. Okay, um, opening C is opening a re and review of bids for city library equipment. This will be real fast. We've got one sympathy bid. <laughs> one sympathy for bid. all of it? Or oh, no, not Oh, just for all one thing. No, no, no. Okay. How, how would you know that, Sandy? Because you some bid. silly person who oh, okay. shall be nameless thought maybe the old chairs would be okay. So she bid 1175 on each one. So, is that you? That's the only bid we got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, oh, the, the advantage of this system is, is that the way we set, uh, set up our sell process is anything that doesn't sell as part of the, this process, you've then, the council has then said that I have the authority to then dispose of it uh, in the best interest of the, uh, of the community. She indicated so. um, possibly 
I would take it to outreach. Yeah, well. There was actually some organization for the needy that was possibly where she could get it, or like the magnifier or something. Yeah, but something. under our cell pa policy, we could not do that till we went through these okay. steps. Okay, okay. So. Uh, do we have a motion to accept this bid? So, so moved. Second. Motion has been uh, made and seconded to accept the eleven dollar and seventy five cent bid on two chairs, and um, with giving Adam permission to dispose of the rest of the materials from the library. Are there any additional questions or comments? I'll call for a vote. Council Person Perry. Yes. Hampson? Yes. McKenzie? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Okay, item 7, miscellaneous D, is consideration of resolution number 2015-06, entitled to fix a date for a public hearing on the possible vacation of city property. And if you read in your um, notes, it's not really a change of anything. It's just that the county was not included in that sale of property, so the wording had to be changed. So is there any discussion over that? Which one is this? That's the Duncombe Street. Uh, the first that one is, let me make sure I got this right. The first one is the north side. Right. Curtis? Is there a date, is there an address attached to this uh, property? This, yeah. this would be Duncombe Street um, lying in between um, Mr. Miller and Mr. Bushman's house. You might remember in years past we sold a portion of it, but there was another portion that had already been sold. Well, that portion had been sold back in 1914. However, it had not been recorded with the county. And so the question was, is what's the best way to go through the procedure of clearing up the uh, process for a potential sale to a, new, to a new owner? And this was the process that was indicated would be the best and cleanest way to clear the abstracts for a sale. So that's what's going on with both this resolution and the next resolution, setting the public hearing to do so. Would you want to set the public hearing at our next council meeting? I believe I've set for the, there's some time periods we have to meet. Okay. Um, it is set in there to be the ninth day of June, 2015. Okay. I move passage of resolution 2015-06, entitled to fix a date for public hearing on the possible vacation of city property. And that date of that public hearing the will be June. The public hearing will be June 9th. Any comments or questions? I guess we need a second, don't we? Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to set the public hearing date of June 9th for resolution number 2015-06, um, a public hearing on the possible vacation of city property, and that would be um, all that part of Duncombe Street lying north of the center line and east of the east line of 17th Street and west of the west line of 16th Street, earliest edition of the city of Sac City, Sac County, Iowa. Is there any discussion or any questions regarding this? If not a call for a vote. Councilperson Person Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brenny? Yes. Perry? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, the next one is E, consideration of resolution number 2015-07 to fix a date for a public hearing on the possible vacation of city property, and that would be um, all that part of Duncombe Street lying south of the center line and east of the east line of 17th Street and west of the west line of 16th Street, earliest edition of the city of Sac City, Sac County, Iowa. I'll make the motion to... Uh, pass the resolution number 2015-07 as read by the mayor. Would we do uh, with, with June 9th? June 9th. Yes, June 9th at the council. Okay, thank you. Good. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to set the, the uh, public hearing date of June 9th for the vaca possible vacation of city property. Duncombe Street line south of the center line of east and the east line of 17th Street, the west of the west line of 16th Street, early edition of the city of Sac City, Sac County, Iowa. Are there any questions or comments? I'll call for a vote. Councilperson Perry? Yes. Hampton? Yes. McKinty? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. 
F is committee and department head reports. That's about your letterheads. That's going to be a while. Any discussion on the ones that we received? Do we need to do any action to? Um, I see in the water report they're suggesting putting the new logo on the paint job on the water tower. Do we need to do an action for that, or do we just? Not unless you feel it necessary painted? to do so. I've, uh, yes, we're due for a repaint on okay. the water tower as part of our service agreement. I think we should put it on. And so we, I've just been taking the action of notifying them. Jim has been taking the action to notify them. I gave him a copy of the design, and he, so he's been working with them to incorporate it. You mean, do we need as a council need to Unless you feel it? absolutely necessary to do so. If you'd like, I can put it on the agenda for the next council meeting so you can take action on it. I think if we hired somebody and paid them good money to coordinate everything in our city, we should allow that to happen. Oh, I, I mean, I think I think we should. I mean, I'm just, I mean, it's been in the in his report for the last two months, and I know it's a month ago we didn't do anything about about it, and I just wondered if, now it's in bold, which normally means it's something he's a little more consistent about. Jim likes to scream in his uh, committee, or his department He's reports. using the logo on his report. If you don't feel it's necessary, Adam, then I think we can move ahead. Unless somebody it is absolutely wants to take action on it. But yeah, his reports are very nice, I have to say. They are. Okay. <laughs> is there anything for 8, the council forum? Um, I do have one thing. Please do not forget. Um, it is posted, and I believe Annette may have already communicated to you. Thursday morning at 7 o'clock is a meeting, um, the goal a Work session meeting where we'll, we'll be discussing improvements in the water department. So, your packets is an invitation to the uh, Tech County Hometown Pride kickoff reception. It's Thursday, June 11th at 7 p.m. at Water Bowl. Um, we're inviting all the city, the city committees plus the council's mayors. Um, Doug Shaw, who is a tremendous supporter of Sac City. Yeah, he is. We'll be there and we'll be speaking about the project and it would be really nice if as a city we would have a good representation at this meeting. He is a very fine person that donates quite a bit of money to our city for different things. I think his, I think his account in the community foundation right now is over $50,000 that he's donated toward betterment. And I, I think it would be really nice if we could maybe just put some faces on the elected leadership for him. It's a great opportunity to do that. Also, it was mentioned earlier that uh, the Arts Council is sponsoring Jerry Barlow. He's a Celtic or Celtic guitarist, depending on who you talk to about pronunciation. And storyteller on the 14th of June at 4 p.m. It's um, no kids. behind the library. It should be kind of fun. We'll have uh, free lemonade, bars, hot dogs, and free free performance for people. So um, bring the kids. It should be fun. Behind the library? Yes. Oh. And what time is it? Four, Four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Okay. It's a joint venture between the library and the Arts Council. Okay. It's going to get loud. Do you have a noise yeah. permit? <laughs> um, lunch, the lunch program started today. Um, it rained. I don't know exactly how many kids we had. But it does, we do have to move some tables on the first and third Monday of the month because of Kiwanis. If there are any of you that have any time at all, like at 10 o'clock in the morning on those days, they, the women could use some help setting up tables. Um, if you'd like to see what's going on, stop by. They usually start cooking around 10.30. And they serve from 11.30 to 12.30, and I'm sure if you'd like to eat with them, the food is good, and it, there's just a nominal price. I think if you want to pay, it's $3.50, because that's what we get paid for the meals. But we don't get paid for adults, so. But you're welcome to stop up there and see what's going on at any time. We do need, also we need some story storytellers or some readers. So there's always something to do if you've got a little time. That's new, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, the Arts Council just uh, passed a program to try and do some arts events with the kids before or after that time. Awesome. Oh, that's good, because that's what I've been trying to get so, going um, here. I think Cheryl Gary's going to show that for us. Great. 
do some things, whether it be floral arranging or painting or some of those kind of things. And we're basically funding supplies for it. Great. Um, I think the whole problem was that the kids are done eating at 12.30 and, the sh and the, most of those start at 1 o'clock. So we have a half an hour in there. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but when you've got 40 kids that don't have anything to do, to sit down and read a book to them would be really a good thing. Okay. So we we'll have some time. It would be nice. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad that's going to happen. Super. <coughs> Move to adjourn. And the reason being is that Kyle, as you know, is running the swimming pool, and he was our big helper during that time and had programs at the rec center, but he's busy. So let's find other help. Move to adjourn. Second. Um, yes, there's a bit of motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? I mean, call for a vote. <laughs> 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 All in favor? Uh, Councilperson Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Uh, yeah. Randy? Yes. Gary? Yes.